The patent agent examination was held on May 7th and through this video I am sharing my thoughts on how I would have solved the paper 2 of the patent agent examination. In case you do not agree with my thoughts or maybe have a different way of solving a particular question, I would look forward to hearing your comments. So coming to part A, all these questions are considered to be compulsory. So first question requires you to identify what are the factors that need to be considered for deciding the date of filing of the request for examination. So here you should refer to section 11B1 and section 11B subsection 4 sub part 2 which relates to application where a secrecy direction have been issued. Now both these sections talk about a prescribed period which has been defined in rule 24B1 sub part 1 which states that the prescribed period is 48 months from the date of the priority of the application or from the date of the filing whichever is earlier. Rule 24B sub rule 1 sub part 3 deals with a situation where a secrecy direction has been issued and provides the timelines for filing a request for examination where such a secrecy direction has been issued. Also here you could mention about rule 24B sub rule 1 sub part 4 which talks about the request for examination for divisional application. In my opinion, these are all the basic timelines that need to be followed for request for examination. So, question 2 says that the person has made an amalgamated painting material and he has also filed a copyright protection for a painting that has he, uh, he has made with that particular material. So, now there are two IP applications that have been filed and he hasn't disclosed the composition of the painting material in either of the two applications. So, you have to evaluate what is the effect of non-disclosure. So, for copyright protection, it is for the painting and you need not specify any composition of the painting material therein. However, since the patent application relates to the amalgamated painting material, you need to specify the composition and if he has not specified it, it would definitely be objected for non-compliance of section 10 subsection 4. Section 3 basically relates to section 49 which provides that any invention which has been used in a foreign vessel which temporarily comes to India or the coastal waters of India and if a patented invention is used for, for the actual need of the vessel or in the construction or working of that particular vessel then such use would not be considered as an infringement. So now there are two cases one he has used the invention on a foreign vessel that would not be considered as an infringement under section 49 however when he uses the invention on an Indian ship within the territory of India that would be considered as an infringement under section 48 and thus your guidance to shipwrap would be to lodge a, a claim for infringement against current for use of the patented technology on the Indian ships. Question 4 is a theoretical question you need to refer to the SAIPP scheme I am not going into the details but the broad details are that the, the remuneration for the uh, facilitators has been increased from 2022 to 2023 part B requires you to answer all the questions again these are compulsory questions question 5 requires you to provide the reasons for advising your client to file a request for early public for this you could refer to basically rule 24B sub rule 2 which provides that an examination would happen only when a patent application has been published so in case you are going for an expedited examination what you need to do is you need to advise your client to get the application published as soon as possible so that the application could be examined expeditiously so that could be one of the reasons the other reason could be sometimes the companies are approaching other companies for licensing or for some contracts based on the claimed invention and for that they need the publication of the patent application in which the invention has been claimed and thus sometimes clients also request for early publication on that ground now coming to what are the advantages of waiting till 18 month you could prevent copying of your idea because the application is protected from not being disclosed in the public domain and so no one would get an idea about the invention and obviously they wouldn't be copying the invention the other benefit could be that in that period there might be some prior arts that would get published and you could then check if any of those are relevant with reference to the aspect of anticipation by way of prior claiming in section 13 and if you get hold of such prior arts you could modify your claims according to that and file for amendment of claims accordingly. Question 6 relates to representation by way of opposition under section 25 subsection 1. So there is a patent application that has been filed by an inventor Raghu and the opponents ha have a registered design that they have filed which predates the patent application that has been filed by Raghu. They also find that there is a previously published patent document which has a earlier priority date. Also they found out that Raghu has not explained the process of making the cup in the description. So now what they can do is they can file an opposition by way of uh, representation and the sections that they could rely on are section 25, subsection 1, subparts B, C and G. So I'll just explain subpart B because all the other parts are self-explanatory. So now the design application is also a published document and thus it falls under section 25, subsection 1, subsection B as any other document which anticipates 
the invention. So in question seven, both Ram Shankar and Gopika own a startup company and they have two different inventions. So now both the inventions that are described here are not related by a same inventive concept because one relates to a method of manufacturing of the solar pump while another relates to a system for tracking the water yield from the pump and that could be any other pump as well apart from the solar powered pump. So in my opinion, both these inventions are different. They need to file two different applications under the startup and they could expedite their application under the Startup India scheme. The other option available to Gopika is she could go independent as the applicant because she is a female applicant and she has an expedited route available to her also in by way of her being a female applicant. So in my opinion, you could suggest both the routes going through the startup and also through the female applicant route. Obviously, if both of them are going through the startup route, in both the applications, the inventors would be different because Gopika has not made what Ram Shankar has made so she cannot be the inventor in the other application. Coming to part C which relates to drafting questions, in part C1 you need to draft at least two independent claims for the description that has been provided. So very broadly this question relates to fire resistant wires and it provides a construction for those. So I have marked what is the preferred embodiment of the invention and this is wh where it, what it says and it relates to an electrical cable or we could say a fire resistant cable. So there is a conductor and on it are wrapped different layers and I have marked all those layers as 2, 3 and 4. These portions define what each of the layers are and what are the composition and thickness and some of this material you could use for dependent while some will use in the independent claim. Also in the end it defines the description defines a method for making this fire resistant wire. So the first independent claim I have made is related to fire resistant wire and what is the structure of it. So there is one conductor and then on top of it is wrapped a primary insulation layer which comprises of a my micaceous polymer. On the primary insulation layer is wrapped at least one secondary insulation layer which is shown here in the figure. Again you could say that the second insulation layer comprises of fluoropolymers. And on the secondary insulation layer is wrapped another tertiary insulation layer which also comprises of fluoropolymers. So this is the basic structure of the independent claim. Another independent claim could be formed for the method of making the fire resistant wire which is provided somewhere here. I have marked it. So you could mention all of all these statements in form of steps for the method. To make dependent claims you could refer to the description provided for each of the layers wherein they have specified what are the material that are used and the respective thickness of each of the layers. Question 8b is a bit complex so I will take time to make a draft claim for that. So maybe watch out for my next video. For part c2 you need to draft a complete specification with at least two claims. So these could be two independent claims or one independent claim and maybe a dependent claim. So question 9a relates to a wind power generating module and these are the different features of the wind power generating module. You could see these are the features 1, 2, 3 and 4 I have marked them and this is what is the claim 1 structure. So you would mention about a wind power generating module and these are the different features. You could use these sentences and connect them with each other so as to make the structure of the claim. I have already made a video on how to connect the different elements together so as to make a claim structure you could refer to that i'm just referring to what what approach you could have taken for answering this particular question so also around the end of the description i have uh, marked uh, different options which you could use for making dependent claims so these statements further define the various features of the invention so now you could make a dependent claim making it dependent on claim one where you have defined these features question 9b relates to a temperature regulated cookware wherein you are measuring the temperature by using a temperature sensor and then communicating it with the help of an RFID tag. Yet again, I've marked the different features that you could use for making the structure of in the independent claim regarding the temperature regulated object or temperature regulated cookware. So here you could see th the description defines how are the different elements connected to each other and this you could use in the claim language in the independent claim. And then there are different statements I've marked which you could use for making the dependent claim. Again, you'll make it dependent on the independent claim and by way of these, you could further define the features that are already there in the independent claim. So this is a specimen structure I've made for the type of claim that I would have written. So I'm talking about a temperature regulated cookware. It has a heatable body with lid and this I've gathered from the description. Also it has an RFID tag assembly which has a transceiver and a temperature sensor connected to the transceiver. So now I've not used RFID here because it is limiting. Description says that it could be any type of transceiver. So let's keep it broad and use transceiver instead. Also the description says that the temperature sensor 
cylinder extends to the tunnel within the body of the heatable cookware. So these I have identified as the essential features of the invention. You have to write the claim one, including all the essential and novel features. And then you can make several dependent claims further defining these features that are already there. So with this, I conclude my video. As I said, this is my thought on how I would have solved the question paper. In case you have any different thoughts or maybe if in case you have any questions, please drop them in the comments box and I'll be happy to answer those.